We continue in Titus chapter 3 today after Paul tells Titus what kind of men should serve as elders and how men and women, older and younger, what their roles are, even slaves, how they're to live out their Christianity in that role in a culture that you couldn't change that. He turns the corner in chapter 3 to how followers of Jesus are to re relate to those who are not Christians. And remember, Christians in the Roman Empire were viewed with great suspicion. Worshipping one God? Worshipping a God who is almighty and knows everything and is everywhere? That was very different than their polytheism and so much paganism that was woven into the Roman culture let alone all of the different belief systems in various colonies with different cultures and historic belief systems. And so it was important, as it is today, how followers of Jesus relate to non-Christians, how we see them and how we behave towards them. And so verse 1 that we looked at last time tells us how we are to relate to those who are in civil authority over us. Remind them, he says to Titus, remind the Christians to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed. And then it seems that he broadens this out as we read on, to malign no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. So it seems he moves beyond the civil authorities that would have primarily have been non-Christians to all non-Christians. And let's look at each one of these phrases just for a moment. To malign no one. To do not cut down people. Do not insult people. Don't establish yourself as greater than them. Now, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't say the truth, especially to other people, about who they are. Jesus did this with the Pharisees, even calling them whitewashed sepulchers. But that wasn't a maligning. That was the truth. Now, we need to be careful there. And if we are going to err, we should err on the side of not saying something rather than saying something. And maybe I should even take it a step back, not thinking something rather than thinking something. Especially as the next verse goes on, to be peaceable. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. One of the beautiful realities of a Christian's experience is they have the peace of Christ. And thus... We can be peaceable with all men. We can be peaceable with all men because we understand that God is over all people. And therefore, we don't have to just slug it out. He's in control of other people as much as he's in control of us. And we can be peaceable. Next, gentle, reasonable, ready to yield on things that really don't make any sense difference. We should not be the bull in the china closet. We should be gentle. Now that doesn't mean that we're wishy-washy and we get blown wherever. No. Camilla and I have used the metaphor in our own home and our parenting that we need to be the gracious icebergs. We're very gracious, but there's an immovableness to who we are. And that's just a quality of followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then showing every consideration for all men. Showing every consideration. Err on the side of considering who they are and where they are to every single person. Now, why would we be this way towards all people? Well, it goes on, and I just want to read it, and then we'll come back to it. For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice 
and envy, hateful, hating one another. Why should we not malign anybody? Why should we be peaceable? Why should we be gentle? Why would we show consideration for all men? Because we used to be like them. And of course, this was written to first generation Christians. And they knew what it was like to be how the people around them were still like. And God had radically transformed them. And part of his transformation is don't forget what you were like as a lost person. And don't malign lost people. Be peaceable. Be gentle. Showing consideration for them. They're lost. And they need Christ. Let me just read 3 through 7 because it's such a good, beautiful exclamation point here to what we're saying about why we should be like this to all people. For we were also once foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved of various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another, but when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy statement. And concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God will be careful to engage in good deeds. These things are good and profitable for men. Remember who we used to be, especially those of us who did not become Christians until we were adults. And understand that people do what they do because of their lostness. As evil as it is, as hurtful as it is, we are the light of the world. And we need to let our light shine towards them by maligning no one, being peaceable, gentle, and showing consideration for all men. Well, I know God will give us the opportunity to do this, probably even today. May God bless us and may we be faithful to walk in the fullness of the Spirit so that this is what would come out of us with difficult people. God bless you.